The process of designing and making your own characters can be fun and intimidating at the same time. Most people like me started out drawing things from reference and sooner or later they developed an itch. An itch to draw their own characters and worlds. But the problem is most people don't know where to start what to learn or how to go about it. So I thought I'd make a video giving out some practical, actionable tips on designing and drawing your own characters. So let's do this. So here's the first step. When you want to draw and design your own characters or start doing it, you need to keep a couple of things in mind. So most of what I'm going to talk about today is right here and some of it applies here as well. So here's the first one. If you want to start drawing and designing your own characters, you need to start thinking in terms of principles. Now that kind of principle, principle. Let me explain. So let's say you're walking by a desk and there is a waffle on that desk, but there is nobody claiming that waffle. So you look around and look at that waffle and you being a person who likes waffle, eat that waffle. And right when you're done eating that waffle, the person who's the owner of that waffle comes and says, hey, what happened to my waffles? So at this point, you have a choice. You have two choices, basically. You either tell the truth that you ate the waffle or two. The raccoon came running in and went straight for your muffin. I said, hey, don't eat that, that's Phoebe's. And if you are a person who's got the principle that you don't lie, even for the little things or for the big things, you would probably tell that person the truth. But if it were me, I would say probably, yeah, this uh, raccoon came running. <laughs> So that's what principles are, basically. Humans have principles, good or bad, that dictates how they act in their day-to-day -day life. It helps them guide their daily choices instead of just being random. Like that, when you're sitting on that table wanting to design a character, you need some sort of a guideline, a way to act. And that's where character design principles come into play. Design principles are like guidelines on how to think and act when you're drawing or designing your own characters. These principles give you a path to work towards instead of just randomly coming up with your own ways to create your own characters. There are many character design principles that you can learn and master, but usually you can just go with a core set of principles that you can use to guide your process of character design. Like story, focusing on the main character story or the purpose purpose of your character's existence, or shapes, focusing on key crucial shapes for your characters, or simplicity and clarity, focusing on the right things and trying to represent those right things in a clear fashion, or exaggeration, or abstraction, and balance. So here's the thing, these principles are there just as a guideline for you to use. They're not set in stone, it's not like you gotta use that principle, it's not like that. These things give you some sort of a start or a path for you to work towards or work on. And it's a process. Each principle is a process, like shape language. It has its own processes underneath it, which you use while you're designing your character. Silhouettes is a process that you think about when you're designing your characters. So each of these principles underneath them, they have these processes that you keep in mind when you're designing your characters. So that is the thing. You need to think in terms of principles when you're designing your characters. Or you just be like clueless sitting around like, man, how do I start designing my own characters? While these folks on these online thingies are designing their own stuff and it's like they're coming out, they're just making stuff out of thin air. Yeah, that, that's how it mostly feels like, right? So you don't, you don't wanna feel like that. So principles, having character design principles will help you not feel like that. So speaking of principles, here's my next step, which is the principle of purpose and story. So now it's a given, right? You gotta start learning these character design principles to begin with, with your character design process. And the first one I would recommend you start with is the principle of purpose. What does that mean, you ask? Well, let me explain it again. We all have ideas. We all have stories and ideas and things and emotions that we want to communicate. I'm just looking at my friend Sashi right here, just sitting there in the bloody corner. <laughs> that is very distracting. Where was I? Yeah. So we all have stories, right? We all have stories, ideas, and emotions that we want to communicate. We want to explore. We want to tell these stories. The thing is, you cannot just put these things out there and expect them for it to be, you know, 
communicated to other people or to be even understand it by yourself. You need some sort of a container to understand these stories, to explore these stories or to emote these emotions. And that container is your character. Your character is a mascot for your stories, for your ideas and for your emotions. For example, you have the story, you have this idea to explore the emotions of anger, sadness, happiness, fear or disgust. You cannot just explore these things or you can't see these things. You can't understand these things. You can probably put them into words, but you want to communicate these ideas through the medium of visual storytelling. So all of a sudden you come up with these different kinds of characters like joy, like anger, like sadness, like fear and disgust. And you make this movie called Inside Out and earn a billion dollars at the box office. Emojis are like a good container, a mascot for a particular emotion. Like that, your character is a visual mascot. It's not just a mascot, right? It's a visual mascot for your story. And that character goes into that world, exploring that story, exploring those experiences that you need to think about or know more about and emotes all those emotions to know more about them. So that's what a character is. Right. That is a purpose of character design. And the second thing to that is story and also another layer of purpose to your character, which is your character needs a purpose, a reason to exist. Why does your character exist? See, as much as I love to draw these standing superheroes with their swords in the back and holding a superhero cool pose, you know, those things are incredibly boring to one draw and one to look at as well, unless they have some reason or purpose behind it. Every character, in my opinion, needs to have some sort of a reason to exist. And when your character has a reason, that reason will justify the visual aspects of that character. Let's say you have a character right that character needs to fight bad guys and he needs to fight them in the dark and obviously that character needs protection and that character needs to be big broad and hopefully good or well versed in fighting skills and being able to say uh, move from building to building or something like that he's basically like a vigilante and he fights in the dark so you have this character named batman with all these requirements and that requirement actually funds the visual motifs of that character the dark appearance the big broad bulky look the razor sharp things on his forearms to sort of stop these knife attacks or bullet attacks and he has these cool gadgets to sort of assist his crime fighting profession if you want to call it that is the thing you need to establish establish a purpose for your character so that you can actually understand the visual motifs of your character. It can also go the other way around. Some people just all of a sudden design this cool looking character and all of a sudden they get the story or this purpose or this idea for a character. I made a character called Grumpy Grimswall and I just drew it one day and all of a sudden I had this big story that I want to tell about this character. Like that Jake Parker Skull Chaser is a great example of a character that just looked cool and all of a sudden you get this story just by looking at that character. So it serves both ways. You need a purpose for your character to exist. And that purpose helps with the visual motifs of your character. And in overall, right, it will just take you away from that blank mindedness as to say where to start or how to go about designing your character. So to design your own characters, you gotta learn the principles, you gotta know the principles, and it's good to have a purpose for your character in mind. So the last tip that I have, actually it's not the last tip, I have a bonus tip after this, but anyways, yeah, this is the final tip out of the three things, is deliberate design practice. Well, if you wanna learn to run, or if you wanna do push-ups, you don't just think about doing push-ups, or don't think about learning to run in the place, right? I mean, you can do that, but you don't just think about running, right? You gotta go and actually do that thing. And also, you cannot just do random things and expect to be good at running or doing push-ups. You gotta do actual push-ups and run to actually get better at running and doing push-ups. And that's where deliberate design practice comes in. You gotta take these principles, which we were talking about, right? You gotta take these things and take one of them, then actually focus on that and practice that one particular thing. So you have this principle of story or shape language or silhouettes or clarity. You take one of that 
and put that into practice. Come up with exercises or go and research and find exercises that you can do and learn about that particular principle because that's how you learn. One of the things I do is uh, doodle pages where I just do a bunch of characters or things on one page and I just fill it up and each page is dedicated to a particular thing that I want to focus on like faces, like hands, like shape language, like silhouettes or just I do these very random sketchy scribbles of characters that are very quick and that will help me get more characters out of my system so that I will know more things through experience because learning alone isn't enough. Most of the information that you probably need to know to design your own character is out there for free but you don't apply that. That is the biggest issue. You need to take those things and put that into practice and through practice you'll gain experience and through experience you'll gain that knowledge of you know designing your own characters because no matter how much I talk to you about how to run you won't know how to run unless you actually run. So that is the biggest thing right there. So take up something like a 100 character design sketch challenge. You just randomly quickly sketch out 100 different characters. Very quick scribbly sketches. Each sketch probably takes you what? two to five minutes long and you just do 100 of these things. Don't think about it like, oh my God, how am I going to come up with 100 different characters? Don't think about it. Just come up with random characters and you'll just come up with things that is already in your head. Then over time, you'll start feeding things. You'll start looking for things. You'll want that fuel to feed your practice. And through that, you'll actually learn to make more characters and know, know, how to design characters because that is the difference between learning how to design characters and knowing how to design characters. Speaking of learning how to design your own characters, do you want to draw? <laughs> this is a part where I plug my own thing, which is Drawing Camp. Yay! Drawing Camp is a structured art program that covers my philosophy and approach towards drawing and character design. The program consists of 14 different chapters that builds on one another, starting from the foundations and fundamentals of drawing and slowly building one up to more complex topics like character design, anatomy, environment and prop design, along with topics like imaginative drawing and finding your own style. All you need to do is just show up for 20 minutes per day and not only you learn something for that day, you would also put that day's lesson into practice with an exercise and a drawing because this program is structured in a daily drawing format. So if you're interested in learning the way I do things, check it out with the links down below in the description. And this is a program I wish I had when I was starting out. So yeah. So here's the final tip, actually the bonus tip. This video is supposed to be like three tips, now it's four. Anyways, the last tip is...